Well, the first time you ran for Congress was 10 years ago. And these 10 years overlaps with Xi Jinping's tenure as Chinese president. So how do you think U.S.-China relations have changed during this past 10 years? And how did that affect on your China policy? So, you know, we all know that China today is very different from China from 12 years ago. And the China today is becoming much more aggressive. We just saw the, the president of China award himself an unprecedented third term. Um, and we have to be clear-eyed about our challenges, the challenges that we face from China and the competition. We also have to make sure we're holding China to account for human rights violations. You know, what's happening in Xinjiang with the re-education camps, it's heartbreaking. You know, how they are clamping down on Hong Kong, you know, tossing out any semblance of, you know, one country, two systems, it's not. You know, they are being repressed. And all of this needs to be called out. And that's what I'm going to do uh, when I'm in Congress. What has happened in China raises a lot of concerns uh, to anyone who's watching. You know, this authoritarian bent, uh, the, the steps that are being taken. And that's why I want to serve on the Foreign Affairs Committee to make sure that the concerns of the people are heard. My district has one of the largest Vietnamese populations in the entire country. And I know that they have concerns not just about China, but also about what's happening in Vietnam. So definitely, these things that are happening in Asia, they matter a lot. Because of the deterioration of U.S.-China relations and because national security threats from China, mm -hmm. uh, what about some policies on manufacturing industry or right. high-tech industry? Yes. Would your policies be different from 10 years ago? Well, I think it's really important that we start to make things in America. The reason why we've had low inflation for so long is because too many corporations in America were outsourcing jobs and manufacturing to China. And now we've seen what the repercussions are. China's going uh, in full lockdown mode. You know, they want a zero COVID policy. And so prices in America are spiking because we're not getting goods from China anymore. We've seen the dangers of being latched on to China for manufacturing. Uh, so we need to decouple. We need to start making things in America. And we have to start with our semiconductor industry. So the CHIPS Act, uh, was actually an investment in rebuilding semiconductor manufacturing here in the United States. And in this congressional district, we actually have Fountain Valley, which is the home to Kingston Technologies, one of the largest manufacturers of memory cards in the world. That bill is going to help build jobs right here in Orange County. China did not want us to pass that bill. They lobbied against it. Michelle Steele sided with China and voted against it. Also, I also want to mention that um, our freedoms are at stake. Uh, our freedoms to decide how we want to live, um, how we want to raise a family. She made some accusations about your uh, connections with China. And so I want to ask, are they true? And what's your response? Look, uh, I am the son of immigrants from Taiwan. My grandmother fled China during the Civil War to escape con communism and arrived in Taiwan. And, you know, when China retaliated recently against Taiwan by firing missiles over the island, my grandfather, my mother, my father, my brother were all on that island. So I understand the threats of communist China better than anyone else because of my personal experience, but also professionally. I'm a lieutenant commander in the Navy Reserves. I hold a top secret security clearance. Many people have seen those images of the top secret files scattered on the floor of the Mar-a-Lago. I can actually read those. I've got the clearance to read those. And as a lieutenant commander in the Navy Reserves, I'm a part of 7th Fleet. 7th Fleet is actually tasked with monitoring the, the Western Pacific and making sure that we have freedom of navigation along the Taiwan Strait and in the South China Sea. And my most recent exercise uh, was working with Japan to war game out scenarios in case China decided to take more aggressive actions in that region. So that is my job. So for Michelle Steele to accuse me of being un-American and unpatriotic or disloyal, it's ludicrous. You know, I understand these threats better than anyone. And I will always fight to make sure that, you know, our national security comes first. What about her accusations on you supporting the Confucius Institution? What is your response to that? Yeah, so 12 years ago, uh, our school district, like hundreds of others across the United States, had a Chinese language and cultural program that was actually approved by the State Department, that was promoted by George W. Bush, and. Uh, was approved by the College Board, which administers the advanced placement tests. And 12 years ago, we realized it wasn't really a good fit, and we ended the program. 
10 years after we ended the program, the State Department revised its outlook on related programs like the Confucius Institute. And you know, the, the situation between the United States and China has evolved considerably since 12 years ago. And my views on this have always remained in lockstep uh, with the State Department. I respect their views, I respect their analysis. And we were the first to end the program, you know, 12 years ago. 马上就要中期选举了。那么，对于现在还没有决定要投票给谁的选民，你希望传达一个什么样的信息去争取他们的选票呢？所以，在这个区非常重要。呃，我们华人、亚裔人一定要去投票，因为如果你没有投票的话，没有人会听你的话，他们就觉得你没有声音，他们要做什么就可以去做。那你看到最近我们有这个 anti Asian hate 嘛，很多这种歧视。如果我们不出来说。我们不赞成这个的话，那这个一定会继续。所以我是啊、呃，我是跟所有的华人说，所有的亚裔人说，不管你要投给谁，你不投给我也好，可是你一定要去投票，一定要增加你的声音，这个是最重要的，不只是给你自己，也是给下一代。